Thank you. Hi. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Evans Library. I can't tell you how excited we are to be having this event in person this year. Our last two years virtually were wonderful. We had a great, great turnout and it was fabulous, but it's really nice to see everyone's faces here tonight. My name is Nancy Garmer. I'm the Interim Dean of Libraries here at Florida Tech. And again, welcome. Um, we do have a new mural in the library and I'm not sure if you all are familiar, but last summer, um, the Alumni Association sponsored a mural of Julius Montgomery on the third floor of the library in honor of all the barriers he broke here in Melbourne locally. So I invite you at intermission or after the event to go up to the third floor and view the mural. Um, I also just wanted to introduce Anna Kephart Norris. She's the university archivist and she has done a fabulous job tonight putting together the photos, curating the photos and also the Spotify playlist around the theme, Black Resistance. So you should have the QR code. There are little slips of paper on your chairs, so please um, have, a, have a look at that. She did a really great job citing and sourcing the music and the playlist is phenomenal. So um, I will, yes. Thanks, Anna. Um, and to get the evening rolling, I am going to go ahead and introduce the Dean of the College of Psychology and Liberal Arts. He is also a professor of history, and I'm sure he can give us some insight more into the, the theme for tonight. We will not be moved exploring black resistance in arts and literature. So thank you. Welcome, Dr. Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think I need the microphone. Uh, just to let you all know, this will be on the final exam. <laughs> That's the first thing students always ask me. Well, it is a delight to be here for the eighth, believe it or not, eighth annual African American read-in. How many people were here for the very first one? Yeah, quite a few. I mean, it's been become kind of an, an institution. Well, so uh, many thanks go to uh, so many people, in particular, the Evans Library. They've let us come in here every Friday night for eight years. They let us bring food in here, which, you know, when I was growing up, you didn't take food and drink into a library unless you want to get thrown out. Well, my job tonight here is twofold. Uh, I'm to talk a little bit about what we're going to hear and, and see and introduce a very amazing young man. Now, I was thinking today about uh, this uh, event and what it might mean and the word resistance stuck in my head and that's a powerful word resistance to what resistance to injustice well, okay well, what's injustice we can define it maybe but we all know what it is and we see it we know what it is and we feel it Resistance to intolerance. Resistance to values that are not humane and frankly not American. Uh, does resistance have to be violent? Is it guns? Is it, is it fire? No. As we're going to see tonight, some of the most powerful tools of resistance are words and images that resonate. Uh, they can bring down the walls of injustice. It might take a while, but they can. And it's something we should, we should all remember, particularly in these uh, troubled times that we live in. Uh, I thought, too, about the late, great John Lewis, who talked about not getting in trouble, but getting in good trouble. Well, the kind of resistors we're going to see tonight maybe got themselves in good trouble and made our world a little bit better place. Now, my second job is to introduce Mr. Letwan Sutton. And he is so accomplished, I actually brought uh, his biography with me to make sure I got everything in. Okay, Letwan is a Brevard County native, 
born and uh, bred in Cocoa Rockledge area. Uh, let's find is it is it Cocoa or is it Rockledge? Cocoa. Cocoa. Yeah. Okay. Now I know up there, that's really important. Down here, we, we don't much care, but up you got you got to be real specific. All right. Came from a very loving, supportive family who encouraged him to be his best, and most importantly, to embrace education. Uh, Batuan was an athlete, still is an athlete, I, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, played uh, football through high school, but also managed to not only be a successful athlete, but a successful scholar, and graduated from high school with honors. Then, the Florida Institute of Technology offered him scholarships based on his athletic ability and his academic ability. Here, the two go hand in hand. Uh, he was uh, a member of the Florida Tech football team. You remember the Florida Tech football team. Uh, gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> and uh, he was frequently seen on the field. You, you started yeah. quite a bit, didn't you, as I, as I recall. And uh, was named to the Gulf Salt Conference honor list two consecutive years in a row. So he was going to get done on the field, and he was going to get done in the classroom. Unfortunately, uh, football's a rough sport, and Matuan was injured. His football career is cut short, but he didn't get discouraged. He rechanneled that gridiron energy into his studies. He was a business major. Uh, he would be very, very active here on campus, uh, in, a, in a wide variety of organizations. Uh, he was on the Florida Tech Dean's List five consecutive semesters, uh, which is quite an accomplishment here. You know, I remember I made the Dean's List once, and, and my mother and father took that letter from the Dean, and they had it laminated made into a plaque because they were pretty sure they were never going to say anything like that again. And back, well, actually they didn't. Uh, in the student government, and he was the College of Aeronautics Outstanding Senior of the Year for 2020, which is quite an accomplishment here for the <laughs> Graduated in spring of 2020, degree in aviation management. Or was it aviation management with flight or just aviation management? Without flight. Without flight. What that means, that means is Mr. Sutton here designs the airports. And do we need well-designed airports? If you've ever been in a badly designed airport, you know we need them. Okay. Uh, a year later, he would uh, obtain a master's in uh, business administration. Now, let me ask you, how were you able to get an MBA in a year? Oh, I couldn't tell you. It was uh, a lot of will and determination. I love school. I love learning. So well, with, without, without doubt, because that is not an easy thing to do. The average time for a graduate degree going full-time, a master's degree, is two years, minimum. And that's, that's moving. So that's very, that's very impressive. And the most important thing of all, when uh, Latuan uh, graduated with his degrees, he found employment. Uh, he's working for a company called MySky. It's an aviation software firm out of Geneva, Switzerland. Now, do you get to go to Geneva? Soon. You, work, you, you gotta go. Uh, he's earned multiple promotions and now is a manager in the aviation tax department. And somebody once said the only thing is permanent or death in taxes. So he is definitely connected. <laughs> he's somebody who knows the Florida Tech experience. He's somebody who probably had to overcome things. And uh, we're thrilled to have him here tonight. He's going to be our guide through this, this journey about resistance and overcoming adversity. So without any further ado, let's give a great big welcome to Mr. Latuan Sutton. Thank All you right, so you're welcome, go get him. Wow, that was incredibly humbling, incredibly humbling. Uh, thank you, Dr. Taylor, sincerely. Uh, whew. It's uh, humbling being back in the place I spent five and a half years spend a lot of time in this library, sometimes overnight, a lot of time during the day, uh, those finals. When he said final exams, I immediately got PTSD. Uh, <laughs> I can't come back here. 
but uh, I, I really enjoy spending my young adult life educating myself and bettering myself at this institution. And um, I'm just curious, uh, do we have any people here from Brevard County? Yeah, but yeah, I love, love to see it. <laughs> um, do we have any, I'm assuming we do, do we have any students here from the Black Student Union? Caribbean Students Association. African Students Association. Okay. A little bit of, he and a little bit of everything. Uh, it's honestly an honor to be a part of this. This is uh, an event I've both presented in and spectated in the past. So it's incredibly humbling to be able to emcee it and uh, to be able to present it to you guys today. And lastly, do we have any Florida Tech alums in here? Love this city. <laughs> oh, all right. So, growing up here in Brevard County, I can't honestly say I experienced a lot of black resistance. Mostly because it was never blatant, and quite frankly, because I just never looked for it. With that in mind, I realized that I was raised in a much easier time than my ancestors were. I got the opportunity to sit in class with my classmates that were of all races. We played on the same playgrounds, learned from the same teachers, drank out of the same water fountains, ate lunch at the same tables, and sat next to each other on the bus rides home. And when I made it to Florida Tech, it was easy being a black student. All of my professors embraced me. My classmates admired me. My coaches developed me and my alma mater cherished me. And one thing about this wonderful institution is that they embrace all cultures and walks of life, which has allowed me to be present here today as your host for a program that highlights my ethnicity. So I'd like to thank all of you that took the time to come here tonight and witness something special. Black history is indeed American history, and recognizing our history helps us create a better future. I don't live in the past, but I sure like to be informed of it. Tonight's theme is We Shall Not Be Moved, exploring black resistance in American arts and literature. I'd like to first send a huge thanks to the Florida Institute of Technology and the Evans Library for a lot, and along with the School of Arts and Communications for allowing us to have this event for the eighth year. We have an exceptional lineup of presenters who will take us on a journey with songs, readings, poems, and spoken word. Without further ado, let's kick it off with, the, with Florida Tech adjunct instructor Donald Harrell and his wife Tutu, who are founders of Orishi Rishi African Folklore, a highly acclaimed performing arts company that teaches about the beauty of African life and culture.
In the beginning, there was no music. And there were no drums, but there was sound. And in those days, people would gather to witness the rise of the sun. As the sun rose in the morning sky, they made sounds that also rose in crescendo to greet it. In time, they learned to cup their hands and to beat their mouths to give this sound rhythm. And when the sun came into full view, they would cease this word of this singing and this band, only to meet again at the next rising sun. Now this practice has gone on for time immemorial, and it continues to this very day, when people learn to keep animals to meet some of their needs, and use were found for the skin for the hides that we use to make drums. They were pegged to the ground, then they were stretched to dry, and to check on them as the afternoon wore on, four men with long whips would take turns rhythmically beating them as they circled in counterclockwise direction. These were the forebearers of all musicians and all drummers, who were called the Alawo. Can everyone please say Alawo? Alawo. One day, one of the Alawo was on his way to the next village to visit his family. And as he traveled along the lonely footpath that joined town to town, village to village, he heard a voice that said, Oh, I walk! Why? Which meant skin be the cover. The man turned around, but he didn't see anyone. So then he heard, Oh, I walk! Why? Skin be her come back. So the man walked back and from a tree that strangely grew along the path, he heard a voice that said, Oh, I walk! I am the spirit of music. There's a hollow in the tree. That's where I live. Please cut it down so that I can escape. And I promise I'll teach you how to make something that can be understood by all humankind. Now this was important then, as it certainly is today. So the man quickly took his machete and he cut the tree down and true to its word according to legend. The spirit of music first appeared and taught the man how to make the very first musical instrument. As you might imagine, it was a... Drum. The spirit of music showed him how to cut the tree into segments, not from his knee to his heel. It showed him how to further hollow out the section of the tree, how to attract some of the skin of high. And then, the spirit of music showed the man how to make sounds with this curious looking thing, especially those that imitated the human voice. But it told him, from now on, you must call yourself Onilu, which is the Yoruba word for drummer. And the spirit of music went further to say to the first drummer, who we call Baba Onilu, father of the drum. When you play your drum, think of your song, and I'll sing it for you. When people hear it, they'll come together as one, they'll learn new important things, and they will be made better prepared to stand the test of time. And so when Baba got back to the village, he played the drum for the first time. I can imagine it sounded a bit like this. That was incredible. 
wasn't it? Yeah. You got some of the energy now? A little bit, a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm a man of many talents, but one thing I can't do, I can't make music. And I like to think I can dance, but uh, it look good in the mirror, but it don't look good as good to everybody else. So I'll, I'll be all right on that one. Very impressed. We'll be seeing the Harrells later on today as well. Now, to give us a historical context of black resistance in American history, is longtime Florida Tech history professor, Dr. Gordon Patterson. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here tonight. In so many ways, what we just heard conveyed the energy and sense of presence. I think we should learn some gestures together. 60 years ago, people put their hands up and said, power to the people. 60 years ago, people, I stood in 1992 during the Rodney King riots by a man named Julian Bond. And he did something. He said, let's do it like we did in the 50s, hand over hand. And between those gestures of lifting your hand up in protest against oppression, against injustice, and putting your hands across your chest is the power and the genius of we shall not be moved. The prophet Jeremiah in the 17th book, the 7th verse, said simply, a man is blessed, a man is blessed like a tree planted by the water. And so we have been blessed. In 1865, three African Americans, Peter Wright, Balaam Allen, and Wright brothers, came to the south side of Crane Creek. They were free men. If you look at the census, they were between 18 and 22 years of age. And they built a community. Today, we arrest more 18 to 22-year-old African American men. And we forget that they build communities. People like so many, W.B. Du Bois, Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, they were freedom fighters. And what they knew was that resistance is not simply opposition. Resistance is action. Resistance is redemptive. Resistance is the way in which the spirit of hope manifest itself. Where there is darkness, resistance seeks light. And historically in America, our genius has been the genius of the freedom fighters who with their words, with their songs, with their poetry, with their drums, have lifted our spirits and made us realize that power and the people are hand over in hand, and that we are stronger, we are better. In the 20th century, writers like our own, she lived in O'Galley, Zora Neale Hurston, who taught at what was then Melbourne Vocational School, who said that her mother told her, Zora, jump at the sun, jump at the sun. Maybe you'll land in the treetops. And it's that resistance that says that the gravity of those who would manipulate us, the gravity of those who would oppress us, it is that spirit of jumping towards the sun that lifts every child and every woman and every man. In our time, the voices of protest, the genius of the streets, comes from places like Compton. I was listening. If I, right now, could get to our governor's playlist, I would have him listen to Kendrick Lamar's Black or the Bear. It might just open a perspective to it. Because you remember in that wonderful song, our Compton poet laureate observes, Pardon my residence. Pardon my residence. You want to kill me. You want to terminate my culture. On February 26, 
I died too, yelling for help as you drowned in your blood. Eleven years ago on the 26th of February, 77 miles from where you are seated, a 17-year-old boy who was going to get some Skittles and some iced tea was killed. And since then, a host of young men and women have died. But their voices live on in lyrics like Black as a Berry. They live on in salt and pepper. They live on in the spirit that refuses to be oppressed. The history of our country is a history of individuals who had the courage to stand and deliver. The virtue of African American history to me is it's improvisation. Improvisation. To improvise means to make of the circumstances, the material you have at hand, to make of it something. To make of it something. And the freedom fighters for 400 years who blessed this land have done it with words, with poems, with songs, with ideas, and we are better for it. So power to the people, hand over hand, God bless you all. Power to the people. And it really touched me because I actually have a grandmother that I'm really close to that was born in the early 40s. So a lot of the unpleasant parts of our history, she actually experienced firsthand. In fact, my grandmother has a fifth grade level education, mostly because it was not in her family's best interest to send her to school. They needed her help in the home. They needed her to help make ends meet. And it was not easy for our father to get a good paying job. At the time, black workers were segregated, paid less than white peers for the same job, and restricted from joining and participating in labor unions. And I can remember, as soon as I could walk, she'd always bring me to participate in these Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. walks over on King Street on 528 in Cocoa, Florida. Not sure if that event still takes place today, but the amount of people that event would bring out every year was inspiring. And me as a five-year-old had no idea what MLK meant to our people. But as soon as I was old enough, she'd educate me on what it meant to have freedom, education, equal rights, and most importantly, an opportunity to become what I wanted. And much of that freedom we have today was afforded from Dr. Martin Luther King. And now, we will have a poem read by Black Student Union President, Iron Agbazua, followed by a poem from Kadira Bay. Good afternoon, everybody. So before I get into this poem, earlier I heard my boy Latuan say, anybody in here part of BSU? And you know, I raised my little hand and I was all happy. And I heard somebody in the audience say, what's BSU? What is that? So FYI, BSU is Black Student Union. All right, so for my poem, I'm going to be reading a poem by Rudy Francisco. So, he is a contemporary spoken word artist and author who is known for combining activism and poetry to enlighten the minds of people who see his works. So, this poem is actually called Untitled from his book of poems, Scratches, or Scratch. So, it is short, but it packs a punch. Untitled, today I'm a courageous windshield, taunting all of the rocks. My parents are both stained glass, which is to say, I come from a long line of windows. Which is to say, I won't break easily, so do your worst. I speak many languages, but shatter is not one of them. My name is Kadira Bay. Um, I am a local painter out here. You might see some of my artwork in a few places. Um, I'm sorry, I get nervous when I do this. Um, 
But I picked this poem by Langston Hughes because it's resonated with me at the, at the current level where I'm at right now in my life as a mother. The, song is, the, the poem is called Mother to Son. It's a poem by Langston Hughes that was first published in 1922 in The Crisis, a magazine dedicated to promoting civil rights in the United States, and later collected in Hughes' first book, The Weary Blues, in 1926. The poem describes the difficulties that black people face in a racist society, alluding to many other obstacles and dangers that racism throws their way, obstacles and dangers that white people don't have to face. And at the same time, the poem argues that black people can overcome these difficulties through persistence, resilience, and mutual support. Adding to that, being a mother, we still have mothers still crying today in 2023, and we still have sons in 2023 crying for their sons. So that's why this resonated with me, as I have my son sitting here listening to this. Well, son, I tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places with no carpets on the floor, bare. But all the time, as I've been climbing on, and reaching landings, and turning corners, and sometimes going in the dark, where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you set down on them stairs, because you'll find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for I'm still going, honey. I'm still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. <laughs> Anybody else holding back the tears tonight? Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right. Uh, Iron, I heard you mention the Black Student Union, so actually, cool story. Uh, my classmate, Farah Merritt, who's not in attendance tonight, actually started the Black Student Union here at Florida Tech. And uh, it was honestly crazy how quickly we built it up and how fast people started to embrace it, how fast the campus started to embrace it. And uh, honestly, we, we kind of grew up with each other. We graduated and every, everyone that I can remember is doing well, really well right now. We all have jobs and you know, we just hope to pass that on and we hope that you guys keep the Black Student Union going here at Florida Tech. You guys have a lot of supporters. Call me at any time, we have some other alums here. So uh, feel free to reach out at any time. So. We're gonna keep this in energy going. Next up, we have ESU's public relations officer, Rebecca Pratt, performing Stand Up. I heard from a little birdie that Rebecca has a very talented voice, and she will be followed by Florida Tech graduate student, Jared Bain, reading For My People by Alex Walker. <laughs>
Jared Bain is actually sick. Condolences to him, so he won't be here today. But we are going to keep it moving. Wow, that was powerful. And now, we will have readings from Ashley Bennett and Andre Frey. Ms. Bennett is an assistant director of student life here at Florida Tech, and Mr. Frey is a graduate student pursuing an MBA, as well as a member of both our Black Student Union and Caribbean Student Association. Ashley Bennett, Andre Frey. Ashley Bennett is also sick, I'm so sorry. Andre. Good night. Good night. Good night everyone. <laughs> so the pen is forever always mightier than any weapon. I'm delighted you're here with me tonight as I pen my tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the late great. So straight to the main room. Dear Dr. King. Tributes forever paid, attributions laid. I mean, you're the face when we hear the word dream. Now we never afraid to scream. Wakanda, you made legacy brave, sleep in peace, Yolanda. We wave to Dexter, Bernice, and Martin Third. I heard something absurd, whether things are worse or better, whatever. I'm just here to give my one love to you and Coretta. Love language you taught was never taught by Rosetta Stone. The builder refused. Rosa put it together, parked itself on a seat. Then you added some pressure. The movements that made moments to treasure. Yours truly, just another grateful black fellow. Dear Dr. King, now we're free to give our two cents and opinion. Sometimes I don't give a damn, and damn or a Nickelodeon. No penny for my thoughts, no shilling on a fence. I keep my pence about my pence. Your sentiments were never politically meant. Real intent was to represent common sense. Like, how can we have civilization without civil rights? Yet they crippled civil rights, rippled a sacrificial fight. Some of us too fickle, we swivel at every sight. Still mourn many lives as we fiddle with the vigil light. Yours truly, just a black beneficiary of your plight. Dear Dr. King, back then we had our head in the sand. We were playing ostrich while being ostracized. Mm. Then you showed us one bird in the hand is better than what would turn out to be two bush guys. Oh. Now we know how to take a stand when something don't sit right. 
Now we know to run for office when it's not run right. Now we know how to march when marginalized. You taught us how to talk before reactive riots rise. Because of that, I realized some did not like your style. While intellectualized, we could all go wild. But comparing you to Malcolm would defeat the civil point. So much respect you still had for the ex. Yours truly, just a black man now allowed to sit at a desk. Oh. Dear Dr. King, we still need you now. I'm sorry, I know you should rest. But as I watch these NFL games without Kaepernick, he took a knee, they took him out. Now I'm thinking, what the heck? Because after that, they took a life kneeling on George's neck. Oh. How ironic and symbolic, I still say they. Knowing very well, everyone is not the same. But this line drawn thicker than blood is causing you pain. Because all you ever wanted was one nation, one name. Our fears to be humane, so they didn't set up and blame. Germ James Earl Ray in vain. Yours truly, just a black man shouting at the screen, relentless. Dear Dr. King, don't step a foot in Memphis. Neither April nor May, please. 68 memories, maybe and maybes. I don't hate Tennessee. Far as heaven see, no difference to be. Maybe, just maybe. They would take you out another way, way much worse. Maybe, just maybe, I can't travel first. Then reverse that hearse on its way to church, Ebenezer. Show up at the mark, thaw you out the freezer. At St. Joseph Hospital, I take you off the trolley, take the bullet out your body. Speed back to the Lorraine Motel lobby, then up the stairs to room 306. At the balcony when the clock says six. I tell you, take Coretta back inside, give her a kiss. Tell Jesse Jackson, put up his fist. As I put my middle finger up while taking... No, no, I'm sorry. Let me change that detail. Because all I ask, all you ask is that my dignity and class prevail. So instead I stand in honor at the balcony rail and eloquently announce that the enemies have failed. Yours truly. Just wishing you never had to spend so many nights in jail. Dear Dr. King, I know my last letter was crazy. My heart cries if it doesn't laugh. That's what these days made me. Out here doing active shooter training to hide from random white guys when they tear a white rise. No one had safety. Devil is a lie, just let the irony set. You said no violence, but yet they called you a threat. Nevertheless, you still gave bravery. A peace of mind, a peace of perspective. Appeasing my spirituality, nothing can faze me. My heart cries if it doesn't laugh. Thanks for all you gave me, yours truly. No longer just another black man or a replica, just another king about to do his best in America. One love. Thank you. Truly in all of that piece, Andre, you did a great job with that one. Anybody who's ever tried to rap or create poetry knows just how difficult it is to write something like that, to have the cadence that it had, to make it make sense, and uh, have all the relations to the current events. Thank you, Andre. Okay. So, we are certainly witnessing some serious talent here, sharing powerful arts and literature tonight. I know you guys won't want to take a break, but I bet you have worked up quite an appetite, and we have some nice things in the back. After all, it is dinner time, so we are actually going to take a 20-minute intermission where you will enjoy delicious food from the Evan Center and Community Market, so we invite you to step into Maya's Lounge for good food and good conversation. See you in 20 minutes. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. All right, can everyone please say Ekurone? Ekurone means good evening in the African language called Yoruba. Can everyone please say Yoruba? Yoruba is spoken in the African country called Nigeria. Nigeria is in West Africa. Remember that Africa is a very huge continent and it has 54 countries in it. Now, among those 54 countries, Nigeria happens to be the largest. Not in high mindset, in population. One out of every five Africans lives in Nigeria. And we also speak so many languages there. Approximately 500 languages are spoken in Nigeria, 1,000 dialects, and English is also the official language. So I'm going to teach you all how to say greetings in the three 
major languages that are most often used in Nigeria. And the languages are, please repeat after me. Everyone say Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa. In Yoruba, you are going to learn to say Ekaro. That means good morning. Now in Igbo, you are going to learn to say Inde Wenu. Inde Wenu means how are you? Now the third language, Hausa, you are going to learn to say Senu de Suwa. This is Mr. Don and I'm his tutu. Together we are called Orishi Rishi. Can everyone say that please? Orishi Rishi. Orishi Rishi means different things. Thank you. And that's where we have the great pleasure of sharing different things in Africa and to choose country Nigeria, like music, dance, stories, games. We always have fun the African way. In Africa, everyone becomes a part of the musical occasion. So with this in mind, we'd like to ask you all to help us sing a song of welcome for this part of our show. A song that says, welcome, may we all have peace and good health. May it be so, may it be so. And that song is called Fuwa Alafia. It's in two parts, call and response. And this evening, Eleven Little Adifuchu has a great pleasure of making the call. Give a round of applause.
Spirit and lean over to pick you up. Wait! I'm like, well, people just got food in their stomach, so they might be feeling the most sleepy, but I know those drums will wake people up. <laughs> they, they did that. <laughs> so thank you for giving us such rhythmic African folklore. Professor Harrell has taught modern African American studies and the evolution of hip hop here at Florida Tech. He and his wife traveled through the United States and beyond, sharing our history and telling our stories. So thank you for being here tonight. And uh, probably doing the most physically demanding thing that anybody is going to do here tonight. So, thank you for getting sturdy for us. And uh, speaking of hip hop, as you guys know, hip hop it actually turns 50 years old this year. Pretty crazy, right? Anybody ever heard "Changes" by Tupac? I got love for my brother, but we can never go nowhere unless we share with each other. How about Childish Gambino's This Is America? Y'all know that one? You go tell somebody. You go tell somebody. Grandma told me, get your money, black man. Y'all don't know about that one. I, I got one more. This one's not hip hop, but I know everybody know this one. How about James Brown's I'm Black and I'm Proud? Yeah. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. All right, now. <laughs> so, uh, we want to thank Miss Eddie and the folks over at Evans Community Market for that great food. Yeah. Evans yeah. Community. <laughs> Community Center is making a difference in South Melbourne. Keep it up. And now, back to our program. We will have Ashanti Reed singing a powerful rendition of A Change Will Come, followed by a spoken word from Brevard's Got Talent judge and community activist, Rick Scott.
November 4, 2008. A funny thing happened to our nation on that day. Something that a lot of people think was really great. A black man was elected president of these United States. And unlike the president before him, Barack went illegal on here. Somebody told me even the eagle was chill. Okay, we have a black president now, so everything will be fine. Are they moving? They're going to have no more crap? All our young people are going to stay in line. Or we can even get rid of this thing they call CP time. And I'm telling you how far we can go. Ain't going to be no stopping. Don't let the young people like to say, it's going to be all the pop. But don't be fooled. We know that ain't true. You and I both know we still got a lot of work to do. Now I was proud of our president. I gave him his props. In fact, I gave a big strange to Barack. But while we celebrating and doing this hand clapping, we can't forget about the ones who made all this happen. All of our ancestors who came up on those slave ships, they're not deceased. But they're the ones who spent time in the belly of that beast. And our poor, poor mother, you don't have to ask her how it felt to be humiliated and raped by the slave master. And all of our forefathers had the marks and whips on their back. The only crime was that their skin happened to be black. And if they tried to rebel, the slave master was ready to shoot. Uh, 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 swing them from some trees like they some strange fruit. Mm -hmm. The rock did for them. He did it for people like Harry who kept the Underground Railroad on track. And she carried a shotgun. She made sure nobody turned back. <laughs> he did it for people like Emmett Till who was beaten and killed because of his race. His only crime was that he had the nerve to look a white woman in the face. The rock did it for all the freedom riders who marched peacefully without ever making a fuss. But they withstood those holes just so people like Rose could keep us seat on that bus. But most he did what happened at the Lorraine Motel when that shot rang out and Martin fell. See, don't blame me, but in the back of my mind, I still see. I see cops smiling while dogs are growling. All because my people had the audacity to want to be free. I see trees, dogs, hoses. Ropes. Because we had a black president on close, forget about it? No. See, it was hard for me to forgive. I wasn't ready to do that yet. Oh, I did forgive. But I have never forgive. <laughs> Great singing by Ashanti there, and a great piece from Rick. Thank you. I told you they were going to like that one. And now, we will have Evans librarian Chelsea Strickland read a poem from Nikki Giovanni, followed by a tribute to famed black opera singer Leotine Price, done by community activist and co-founder of Little Growers, Inc., Camille Hadley. Good evening, everyone. So um, as noted writer Tyra Wilkes in a 2022 article on Giovanni's new book, Make Me Rain, Poems and Prose, Giovanni, an accomplished writer and activist who famously said, movements make leaders, gained popularity during the black arts movement of the early 1970s. Her protest poetry, alongside works of Sonia Sanchez, Audre Lorde, and others, was the beginning of the use of art as a form of resistance. Their work provoked the thought that despite what black people have been told through the actions of American citizens and lawmakers, 
They are and carry the power to be much more than that. This poem is called Vote by Nikki Giovanni. It's not a hug, nor mistletoe at Christmas. It's not a colored egg at Easter, nor a bunny hopping across a meadow. It is a vote, saying you are a citizen. Though it sometimes is chocolate or sometimes vanilla, it can be a female or a male. It is right or left. I can agree or disagree, but, and this is an important but, I am a citizen. I should be able to vote from prison. I should be able to vote from the battlefield. I should be able to vote when I get a driver's license. I should be able to vote when I can purchase a gun. I must be able to vote if I am in the hospital, if I am in the old folks' home, if I'm needing a ride to a polling place. I am a citizen. I must be able to vote. Folks were lynched. Folks were shot. Folks' communities were gerrymandered. Folks who believed in the Constitution were lied to, burned out, bought, and sold because they agreed all men were created equal. Folks vote to make us free. It's not cookies nor cake, but it is the icing that is so sweet. Good for the folks, good for us. growing up in Compton, I wanted to be an opera singer. My friends thought that was weird, but I did not. Because of Leontine Price, I knew that I could. She was the first African American to be featured in a televised opera that later got taken down by its producers because of backlash, because she was black. But she was not moved. She went on to be the first black woman to sing the Metropolitan Opera, La Traviata. And in honor of her, tonight I sing for you an Italian opera song, Say to Mami by Alessandro Parasotti. <laughs> Thank you. 
have one question. When did you learn how to sing like this? <laughs> Lots of voices. <laughs> have a lot of multi-talented people here. I see a lot of young black boys in the crowd today. And uh, one thing that I want to tell you guys is uh, I know when I was growing up, one thing that we always seen and one thing we always thought we had to do was either be an entertainer or an athlete. And I'm here to tell you, more to life than that, than becoming an entertainer or an athlete. It's only a small amount of people who get to do that. And you could be successful being an accountant, being a lawyer, you can build homes, you could be an architect, you can be an engineer. There's a lot of things that you can do in this world that don't involve you being on television. And they're just as important to the society as anything that you see LeBron James doing or you see that Drake's rapping. There's more to life than that, and there's a lot more ways to become successful. So we're going to have Timmy, not sure what he's doing, but I know that he's going to do something. And he's going to be followed by Florida Tech psychology professor, Dr. Felipe Chavez, who will read us poems from the Black Woman's Poet the Laureate, Maya Angelou. Awesome. Okay. Pleasure to meet everybody. Um, I'm new to Palm Bay. Um, I found out about this event on Facebook, and I said, hey, let's come by. I asked, was it an open mic? And she's like, no, but somebody left so you can go ahead and do a piece. And she said the topic is resistance. So it's interesting because when I think about resistance, um, I think that um, I want to quote Dr. Marimba Ani, right? I don't know if y'all are familiar with her. But she said as African people or descendants of African, practicing your culture is your immune system. So to me, that's resistance, right? And um, she, it's interesting because she was speaking in Yoruba, and in Yoruba culture they have a concept called ala suwada enian. It's very identical to something you guys might have heard called mbutu, which means I am because we are. So in thinking about that, I want to share a story. Um, so it says, soon it will be your turn. This was the declarations of the oracle to Etu, the antelope, when he was advised to ask his community to make sacrifice for him. They refused to comply. Can't you see how the cast has come to fruition? And then I'm going to explain this. And I wrote a poem. So I know everybody just seen the Grammys. Everybody loves music. I love rap. So I was thinking about Jay-Z and him saying he's the greatest rapper and all of these things. So there's a poem I wrote. I said, I'll be reading because it's kind of new just now. But I said, all rappers lie. But some of my favorites speak in half-truths. Like Jay-Z when he said he couldn't help the poor if he was one of them. That was a poor written lie that I think lies in white supremacist truths. But when Jay-Z said nobody wins when the family feuds, that was one of the few times one of my favorite rappers told the truth. So scrolling on social media the other day, I came across a video of a starving youth in an all too familiar situation of a black man and black woman ready to lace up their boots. No, not like Huey and Angela fighting for freedom, justice, and truth, but more like Day Day Martin and Shanene dancing on black people's new news, which we call the YouTube. And this not only has me in tubes, because the fact the argument started over some McDonald's food that probably got grandma hooked up to tubes in addition to the hormones causing hyperactivities and our boys and our girls having their blood flow all too soon. I was confused because the father said, I will only bring fruit for the seed I produced. Which the mother wouldn't allow just one of the three to feast while she starved the other two. Instead, she ripped up the burger and said, if his brother can't eat, he can't eat too. Y'all know how that go. So I said, this too is yet another half truth. I pray if she can hear the sweet marimba tunes, maybe the rest will fall through. Both her and baby daddy number two will embrace the beautiful African principle of Mbutu. That can be the whole but not half truth. But see, Jay-Z was still correct because nobody wins when the family feuds. 
And the whole black community will lose if the family food is over something as simple as food. Like, like, why can't we give a brother a lift without pressing him for money for fuel? Like, like, it's really not cool how we let the psychological ways of Europeans gash you. See, community is something some of us don't learn at HU. Since BC, all you can see is ways of Yorugu. See, they stopped our connection with each other like Yaku. Recently, I see money go to HBCUs, but sometimes all they really produce is chickens in a coop. Because the only pro is they say deuces to the sh that they've been through. See, they'd rather franchise a Popeyes with the money made off of grandma's due plex instead of preventing generations of new stress for generations. Because I think grandmama would just want everybody in the family to just have a living situation. Even if it was three upstairs and two families in the basement. If grand auntie is out back cooking fresh vegetation, mama in the kitchen whipping, singing songs is really incantation. Living off the land as one fam is the true ancestral veneration. Why you think they planted us on a plant from a plantation? This plant hating is deeper than hashtags and flags waving. They stealing black organs for cellular memorization, hijacking our destinies, and you wonder why we trade in places? We really need somebody to cast divination for the nation. What happened to the circle of life? I am because we are, is what Rafiki was saying. But everybody wants to lie on their own, thinking society can't tame them. But the lion not seeing himself in the gazelle is like the sea thinking it can exist without the shells or the blood thinking that it can flow without the cells and the justice system keeping us trapped without the jails let's get free is what we yell chasing dead prayers but we thinking climbing up the charts is our only way to excel but we just a lone wolf hitting a lick for a taste in hell in hell we can't see it but we can feel it see the truth is similar to braille the lion didn't know he was the same as the gazelle until he seen a hunter launch an arrow of a bow made out of the skin of the gazelle that was the day that a predator was made to feel like a prey that was the day that a king was made to feel like a slave that was the day the lion was no longer rich homie he was just feeling some type of way because he realized he failed because his nervousness revealed that him and the gazelle share the same nervous cells. So again, I ask you, can you see how the fruition has passed? See, the community was supposed to make sacrifice for the antelope. They decided not to. So while the antelope was going to hunt on his own, that's when the hunter killed him and used his skin to create a bow to destroy the whole community. So again, when she gave me the topic of resistance, I say true resistance is practicing your culture and operating out of African center mind. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I had to pause after that. Want to make sure he got his flowers. All right. So um, I'm going to be reading a poem by Maya Angelou, and it's entitled Still I Rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you so beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like the moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cry? Does my haughtiness offend you? Oh, don't take it awful hard. Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. 
You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I rise. <laughs> I know. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts from my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise. I rise. I rise. Thank you for the very powerful pieces by Timmy. Did not expect to have you tonight, but that was exceptional. That was exceptional. And thank you, Dr. Chavez. And uh, I know you guys probably don't want this to end, but uh, we're getting very, very close to it. Um, I thank you guys for allowing me to MC in this MC this event. Uh, I thank you guys for embracing me. Uh, incredibly humbled to be back here at my alma mater. But I will say we have one more performance, and that is going to come and be an original piece for Mr. Christopher Arone. That is going to be a song followed by an acapella. And right after that, we're going to have Florida Today veteran journalist and adjunct instructor, Mr. Jeff J.D. Fiala, who will close us out for tonight. So uh, thank you guys sincerely. <laughs> Let's give our host one more round of applause. Yeah, great job. You guys having fun? All right, I'm a talk back to me kind of guy, so we're going to have choir rehearsal real quick, and then I'm going to start. All right, y'all okay with that? Y'all okay? All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to do a song, follow after Still I Rise, called Elevate. So, you know, we didn't plan that. We did good, okay? All right, so I need you guys to help me out. When I point the mic at you, or when I point to you, just say Elevate, okay? So I'm going to say, uh, Elevate, high rise. I know that I got big goals. Come on. Elevate. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think y'all were going to do that good. Okay, okay. Gear shift. My mind, my body, my soul. I tell you, I'm a. Elevate. Started from the bottom, but the way up top, not low. Come on. Elevate. You guys are doing great. All right, let's go. Oh, my name is Christopher Aaron, CA Revolution. So, CA, Christopher Aaron, CA Revolution. Pun intended. Oh, we got it. <laughs> All right, y'all feel free to like loosen up, move around. We're almost done, you know. I know y'all got some partying, y'all. Y'all not letting me fool. Y'all not fooling me with all this. Turn me up a little bit. We like to party. Come on and say it. All right, high rise. I know that I got big goals. Come on. Hey, gear shift. My mind, my body, my soul. I tell you, I'm a. I started from the bottom, but I'm way up top, not low. Come on, elevate. Go a little higher. I still got levels to go. Listen. Coming from another place, I see the look on the hater face. Old thoughts get erased, old me get replaced. New bills, new keys, and a new safe. A new mental space when I rent it out. I got a brighter future and I don't try to tend it out. I can finally see the light in the day when I used to cry away, wondering where, when, and how. I elevated all my stinking thinking. False reality was hindering my salary. It burned like a calorie. Now I can't empower me. In a second hourly, I was acting cowardly, but now I see. All of the things I really could have missed. Down on myself, I would have had regrets. Now I take a chance and I don't just sit. Raise the bar, cause that's why I was saying, get ready, y'all. Hey, high rise. I know that I got big goals. Come on. Elevate. Gear shift. My mind, my body, my soul. I tell you, I'm a so they're from the bottom, but I'm way up top, not low. Come on. Elevate. Go a little higher. Still got levels to go. Say it with me. Elevate. High rise. I know that I got big goals. Come on. Elevate. 
gear shift. My mom, y'all doing good. Say it loud now. Uh, started from the bottom, but the way on top, not low. Come on. I still got, listen. They tell me that slow progression is better than no progression. I'm digging that quote. I was buried in doubt at my low, but now at my high, ain't no doubt and no more. That's for sure. I'm living my dreams when I wake and I'm sleep. My cycle of vision is set on repeat. In case I forget, then I'm grabbing my journal, then speaking, then speaking, then speaking, then speaking till it come to life. Days and these nights, no settling, riding from doubting myself, and I do not know why, but I'm doubting myself because I wanna get high. I'm not talking about high. I'm not talking about sight. I'm talking about shuttles and Pluto and Mars. I'm talking about Jupiter, Pluto and. Mars. I'm talking about Pluto and Jupiter far. I'm not getting low, man. I'm raising a bar. High rise. I know that I got big goals. Say it loud. Gear shift. My mind, my body, my soul. I tell you, I'm going to elevate. I started from the bottom, but I'm way up top, not low. Come on, elevate. Go a little higher. I still got levels to go. We got to elevate. It's a high rise. I know that I got big goals. Elevate. Gear shift. My mind, my body, my soul, I tell you I'm going to elevate. I started from the bottom, but I'm way on top, not low. Now I got to elevate, go a little higher. I still got levels to go. And in this movement, I decided what is moving. And what is moving is so strong, you cannot end my movement. This is for clarity. I hope you see the resolution. My name is CA, but I hope you see a revolution. My fans are revolutionaries, and that's so conducive. But I don't just want fans. I want leaders of revolutions that keeps evolving my only belief in evolution. We evolve so much, we change the atmosphere of institutions. We make goals to reach, though it's challenging to reach them, and make efforts to teach even the ones that hate the teacher. Preaching to the congregation, but don't judge the preacher. Inviting you to conversation like you are the speaker. My goal before the week up is somehow to get the week up. We need to web together, so I'm trying to get the link up. If our message is the music, but we tone deaf the singers, and they don't get the right message, you can't blame the speakers. Like, if you moving wrong, dog, you can't blame your sneakers. You just been moving wrong, so change things and speed up. You got a voice, so change things and speak up. If they gonna see a revolution, they need to see us elevate. Christopher another hand. All right, very good, very good. I want to elevate right now. All right, so I want to thank everyone out here, let me get my hand off that mic, um, who turned out, who resisted the urge to stay home. You came out tonight, so very good. A little punny right there. Um, thanks to uh, Mrs. Edie, I don't know if she's still here, uh, the folks who made the food, thank you again. All right. I want to thank uh, Latuan, who did an excellent job. This is really wonderful. I want to thank Dr. Patterson, who, uh, who is the hidden glue uh, with this program here, and his wife, Joy Patterson, as well. Uh, and also, I want to share thanks to uh, the organizers, Nancy, who is with Library Services here. I want to thank Anna, who, by the way, is curating, who has curated a uh, Spotify list that we've talked about a little bit. You've heard some of the music. So I would love for you to go to Spotify and look it up. Anna, how can we find that? Um, there should be little pieces of paper everywhere um, that has a donation on it. Absolutely. So look that up. Uh, check out the soundtrack. It is, it is uh, clean. Let's, let's put it that way. All right. And um, is clean? Oh, oh, well, we'll we'll take the elevator down. Okay, so very good. You can elevate a little bit later. All right. So on, on and on that soundtrack, you'll find things like "Strange Fruit," uh, which was written by a Jewish uh, uh, songwriter, sung by Billie Holiday, right? And it went out and became a popular underground hit. Let's say that. And those who know the history, the history of lynching in this country, know the power of those words. And um, the fact that it was written and that it crossed cultures uh, shows you that our nation is a mosaic of people. When it comes to resistance, 1776, people 
fought back against England. When it came time to protest against Jim Crow, a mosaic of people, Jews, Gentiles, blacks, whites, all came together and died together to make sure that we could become one beloved community. All right, so check that list out if you can. All right, and um, I had a reading that I wanted to do. Um, actually, my wife wanted me to do, and I think I'll change it just a little bit uh, because I think this is even more important. The purpose of us coming together tonight, hello. <laughs> the purpose of us coming together tonight uh, was to share the literature, the culture, and the music of African American uh, African Americans, and uh, take note of the power of resistance. So I want you to take a look across the room, over here in the corner. You'll see a sign that says uh, something about banned books. It's amazing that in a nation that is founded on the idea that everyone has a right to a free press, and my media writing class is here, you won't be quizzed on this, don't worry about it. But this nation is founded. Right, exactly. So this nation is founded on the free press, free speech, freedom of assembly, and what are the other? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, the right to petition our government, all of these things. And so what we're having, what we're finding is that government in certain places and among certain folks, they're resisting uh, that constitutional amendment and they are putting into place uh, things that ban books. Now, I'm not getting political, uh, I'm not here to get political, but what I'm here to tell you is that we need to, as Christopher would say, elevate. So I will read a few titles of books that have been banned, okay, along with some authors. The 1619 Project. And you can raise your hands uh, if you have these books in your, on your bookshelf. Roots by Alex Haley. Angela Davis, Women Black. A book called Make All Black Lives Matter. Just about anything by Toni Morrison, including The Bluest Eye. Really? Go take a look. Mouse, a book about the Holocaust, a comic graphic novel about the Holocaust. Another book um, from our LGBTQ brothers and sisters uh, and others. Uh, this book is gay. That book is also on the shelf uh, to be banned. Native Son, and I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. I simply just want to give you those titles. If you have those books on your shelf, you're blessed because children will not have access to them, teens will not have access to them in certain places. So I just wanted to do that. Now, before I go, I don't want to leave on a sour note or you know, a, a deep note. I also want to make a, a few announcements um, we will have uh, a STEM Day uh, community event, which will take place on Saturday, February 18th, at the Evans Center. Not the library, but the center, which is over in South Melbourne. It's at 1361 Florida Avenue. Everyone from every background is invited. Uh, it's, it's put on by the L3 Harris employees of African descent, and they're trying to make uh, uh, inroads into the community for STEM and the STEM education, all right? The other thing too, the Black Student Union here at Florida Tech, where is Arian? Hey Heyo. Everybody say hey, -o. hey -o. All right, can you tell us about your project, uh, your STEM project that's coming up real quick? Hello, elevate. We're going to have a DJ and we're going to have So That's right. Make sure you put on a thousand. And that is open to the public, and Dr. Winston, Winston Scott uh, will be there, who was a uh, uh, command, I think, a specialist for the space shuttle, two flights uh, space shuttle. Uh, he, he will be there as well. We also um, have a melanin pop up event, uh, pop up market that will be taking place. February 26th from 3 to 7 p.m. in Rockledge at the, the Rockledge Civic Hub. Uh, everyone is invited. 
and that does have tickets, but it also has a DJ. So, you know, you know, tickets and a DJ. That's all right. It's very good. So, um, with that being said, I want to thank you on behalf of the organizers, uh, Nancy, Anna, Joy, and my wife, Rolanda Hatcher-Gallup, who uh, could not be here tonight. I want to thank you guys. I want you, and I, I invite you to take a little time, four or five minutes after this is done, get to know each other. Look at you. Take a look around the room. This is humanity. These are your brothers and sisters. So be blessed, have a good night, and elevate. <laughs>